Suit Arts with OVXEntertainment.com, and with us today we have special guest, Reverend Tanya Young. So hey Tanya, thanks for being here. Hello Sue, it's always a pleasure to be here with you and Matt. Thank you. So uh, how did you get to the Outer Banks? I know you're a North Carolina native, so when did you get here? I am, I hate to say how many years ago Sue, <laughs> but uh, I have basically been on the Outer Banks all of my life since I was three years old. Wow. Uh, my father was one of the earlier developers down nice. here. And so I grew, grew up with sand between my toes and tourism on my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the biggest industries, I'd say since since I got here about 15 years ago, um, there are a lot of weddings that happen here on the Outer Banks. Yes, it is, and of course weddings were a byproduct of, of the cottage industry, right. as we have the long-term rentals. Yep. And the destination wedding uh, is perfect for the couple coming in for a week. They get their marriage license on Monday and maybe they have their marriage ceremony on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Yep. And, uh, and of course that's during the high season months, uh, June, July, and August. Of course in the shoulder season, April, May, and September, October, we seem to have more weekend weddings right. during that time. Yep, that's true. So when did you start performing wedding ceremonies? 2003. And uh, you know, every year uh, brings new couples mm -hmm. and new energies. Uh, and I, I find myself, um, after every season, reflecting back and just really, I'm always amazed at the variety of couples that I have and, and what they've contributed to their ceremonies. Um, I know in the past probably decade, there's been more and more wedding officiants here on the Outer Banks. Um, so, what sets you apart from the others? Well, I, I think what sets me apart is the time that I give to the ceremony. Um, I write all of my own work, Sue, and I give my couples choices from which to choose. So, um, I may send them, once we book the ceremony, uh, I, I will send them 10 to 15 ceremonies. Wow. And, um, they are, and maybe more. Uh, and they are all Word documents. Uh -huh. And so they may, might find one that's just perfect, but then they may say, oh, well, I love this number 10, but I like the vows in number nine. I want to use those. I like the ring ceremony in number two. So they simply begin to copy and paste. Wow, nice. and, yeah. and when it's all over with, they've created their own ceremony. And what's more, I encourage my couples to tweak my words. I yeah. might, might have said something that just doesn't ring true to them, so change it. It's okay. Right. If it's not okay, when I get it back, I'll say, now that's not what I meant. <laughs> um, but, uh, but usually it's okay. And you know, many couples have um, their own readings they want to contribute. Most ceremonies have a reading in them, and many like to write their own vows. Right. And so it just depends on the couple. Uh, it's not unusual for a, a couple to write three-fourths of their own ceremony and I quite frankly I love that right yeah uh, because it's 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 their ceremony right and it speaks for them and uh, and I think that the day of the ceremony comes I think that not only do they own that ceremony but that their guests know that that mm -hmm. is them exactly exactly yes. But I know we get the occasional couple who's just like, I just want to get married. And so do you have that come up where they're like, just, you know, we just want like the basic oh, quick yes. ceremony and... Oh yes, but I but if I have time, if it's not this morning and they want to get married this afternoon, right. <laughs> if they give me 24 hours and have access to email, I'll email them a short number of ceremonies, and I still like for them to choose. Right. Because it's still a very it important is. ceremony for them. It is. And I don't want to be in front of someone and say something that they wouldn't want me to say. Right. And so I want them to be comfortable with it and to, to feel like they own it. Nice. Now, you're talking about elopement. You know, we have a great deal of that. Mm -hmm. um, we do. And that brings up the question of uh, marriage license. Right. You know, where do you get the marriage license and how long in advance can you get them? Well, the North Carolina law reads that you can get your marriage license anywhere in North Carolina, hmm. in any register of deeds in North Carolina. Um, you can get them up to 60 days in advance. Okay. Of course, you know, the register of deeds are not open on uh, the weekend. 
-hmm. So you must get them Monday through Friday. And also remember to check into holidays because oh, they yeah, open, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, holidays. Right. And so uh, while we are in Dare County here, um, I have many couples uh, that from all over North Carolina that come and they get their license in the town they may li live in. They may live in Raleigh, they may live in Charlotte. I also have couples that um, may be near the North Carolina line, that right. they just go across the line and get their license at the nearest town and that sort of thing. So, but still, uh, if it's a large wedding, uh, most couples are going to make a trip probably 60 days before the ceremony right. just to check out the vendors mm -hmm. and whatever, and so that's a good time to get the license, to stay over on a Monday or come earlier on a Friday. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. So so you did say you get some elopements, so people could call you up when they check in Saturday or Sunday and then schedule something with you, or is that too soon? Do you welcome last minute requests like that? I can usually work them in. Um, it, it just depends on what time of day they want to have it and if I have another ceremony that day, but I mean, Let's face it, daylight hours, there's a lot of daylight hours. There is, I and love so, that. And again, depending on where I am, I mean, I cover, we co we all cover about 150 miles of coastline here. Will you go and to Ocracoke and uh, I Corova do. too? I do, oh yes, Corova, I go to a lot, really. Hmm. Ocracoke, um, not quite as much, but I love to go down to Ocracoke, and um, I will uh, go. It does take all day. It does. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of just have to uh, designate that time. Exactly. And of course, I go to Hatteras Island as uh -huh. well. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice down there with their big, wide open beaches. And I'm sure, yes. and they do have um, kind of rules down there on the National Seashore, which I'm sure if somebody who is from out of town and they're talking with you, you know all about that. So you can help them. Right. Anywhere on, Cape, on, on Hatteras Island, if you have a ceremony on the beach, you are to get a special use permit uh, from the national government, and uh, that's available on their on their website. and um, so, And it's a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So that just keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. But anywhere else on the Outer Banks, they just need their marriage license to get. That's the, the rules like right now as we speak, and we hope that stays. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, if you have, we have some. Uh, people who like to plan way ahead of time, how much earlier than the wedding date will you allow people to book? Well, I will book as, as far ahead as they like. I, I don't think I've ever booked over two years right. ahead. Uh, right now, uh, people are, are planning two years ahead. I mean, truly they are. Um, but they usually don't book the officiant, and, and really, they can't book the rental usually till about a year ahead. That's true. So you see there's a procedure here um, when having a destination wedding. Certainly the most important thing is the venue. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your cottage? So they've got to book the cottage first. And then they have to decide of that week they're here, what date, what mm -hmm. day are we going to get married? Is it going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or whatever? Right. And what time? And so once they decide on that, then they can start booking their vendors. And I like to I, I like to think that I'm I'm one of the first they book as an you would think so, since you're but like that's the not most always important. that's not always the case. <laughs> I think it just depends on what they have their mind right on. Yeah. Uh, but of course we have vendors available for everything, um, whether it's musicians, uh, cakes, catering, mm -hmm. and of course the large homes. They just have it all to come in there, and it really makes for for quite a a, a wonderful day. It does. And you actually, you do other things besides just the, the traditional wedding. Um, you have other rituals. You perform like baby naming ceremonies and, I do. Um, and vow renewals. And, I and for do. vow renewals, they don't have to get a license or anything, right? That's just... No, they don't. And, um, you know, this is rewarding now. Um, I am beginning to have my couples that I married. Oh, yeah. Uh, to come back for vow renewals. That's great. After 10 years. You know, yeah. that's kind of a big occasion. And I just love doing that. And they're also bringing their children back for yep. me to christen with ocean water. And of course, that is a real special treat for me uh, to do and to meet those children. Right, it is. Now, as far as second marriages, I do a great deal of second marriages. And many of those uh, bring uh, families, mm -hmm. blended families in. And we do have rituals uh, that work for them as well. Um, one that I can think of right now with small children is the family sand ceremony. Right. 
and this is where the children participate in the sand ceremony. The sand ceremony is simply, simply takes the place um, of the unity candle that you might have seen performed. Um, you know, candles just won't stay lit right. on the beach. <laughs> so therefore, the sand. And uh, that's a very po popular ritual, and that comes right after the ring ceremony. Another one that has become quite popular is the shell blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is after the kiss, um, the couple turn and they walk to the water's edge, and then I speak to the guests and tell them what we're going to do. And as they have come into the ceremony, they have been holding a shell mm -hmm. that uh, the couple has collected, usually from the beach. Um, and uh, so I say, now we're going to take these shells down and we're going to offer a blessing to the couple and everybody here, and we're going to toss these shells in, in the water. And it makes a great photo. It does. Uh, yeah. If I could get everybody in a straight line, which is yeah. certainly sometimes <laughs> a, uh, uh, an issue, but yeah. depending on how large it is. Exactly. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's very nice. And there are other things, hand fasting, um, I've got a wine ceremony, uh, just a lot of different things you can add. I've had a few at the glass. Stomping yes. the mazel tov. Uh-huh, jumping the broom. Yep. Just one. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. So basically, you're fine with people who want to make their ceremony their own ceremony, and you actually encourage that. Absolutely. If I encourage anything, that, that would be what I encourage the most, is let it be yours. I am simply the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. You know, it is your ceremony. Let it, let's let it be you. Let it, let, let's let it resonate to the two of you. And if it's resonating to the two of you, then it's resonating and to your audience right. and to your guests that are there because they know you. They're your very best friends it's and true. they're your family. Right. And um, so when we, when we get that to the level that we've wanted, and, and I always know when we've done that because afterwards I have the families, I have family members to say, you know, that was just so like them. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you do that? And I said, I didn't do that. They did that. Right. You know, with the work that they put into the ceremony. Right. That's awesome. And uh, I know there's just one other thing I want to talk about, and that's that in the past, I guess maybe two years, um, same-sex marriages have become legal in North Carolina. So how do you feel about that? I'm honored to perform same-sex marriages, and it's finally about time. It was yeah. just about time. And uh, I was busy last year. You know, it was ratified in North Carolina October 10th, um, 2014. Okay, I know it has come and, out. Yes, well. and so it's uh, and so since then, uh, right after then, I began doing quite a few, and those that I did at that point were those couples that had been together for many years. Right. And they just simply wanted it to be legal, mm -hmm. and and they were older, you know, right. in case something would happen to the other or whatever. And what an honor! I I married. Um, one couple in their 80s. Wow. You know, and that was, and they had been together for like 35 years. Aww. You know, so uh, there's some really some, some stories yeah. here with these, with these marriages and some history. And, uh, and now this year we're beginning to see the younger, the younger ones mm -hmm. come along. And uh, so, and, and they're having all of the, all of the vendors, they're, they're going to be, um, you know, just as big as, um, other weddings, and, and pretty soon it's just all going to be homogenized. Right. You know, you're just, you're just, right. it do, just doesn't matter, and it just doesn't matter. It, That's right. just exactly. the way it is. I did have to find myself writing uh, some new ceremonies for same sex, mm -hmm. so I was busy uh, after it was ratified um, doing that, and I'm still adding to my portfolio with that. Uh, there were just simply some things that had to be addressed, and many of those couples are. Um, uh, are leading off with the um, uh, with the statue uh, uh, Justice uh, Kennedy, huh, and so they're they're leading off with with the actual ruling, which is um, quite awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you you know same sex marriages, they they have to go through the exact same procedure now. I know it used to be just the commitment ceremony, mm -hmm. so they didn't need to get the license. Oh, absolutely. At the courthouse and everything, but now they got to follow the exact same procedures and make sure they have that license before the wedding. Yes, that's true. And you know, uh, just recently, uh, our Dare County offices, and perhaps more throughout the state, uh, are offering some on online that you can do beforehand, hmm. which helps. And so uh, when, when you know what, what county you're going to get your license, you might try to do some of that online. That's definitely mm -hmm. more convenient. Yes, it is. 
Great. Uh, but they're all um, prepared, and, and we have a large register of deeds office um, here in Dare County, and they issue um, over a thousand marriage license a year. Very great, yeah. And of course, Currituck County is our neighboring county, so they issue a lot yeah. as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said before, it doesn't matter what county in North Carolina, as long as it's in That's right. North Carolina. That's right. And you were talking about the uh, Corova area, and that is the 4x4 four four area where you have to have a four-wheel drive to get to. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do perform there. Um, but since so many homes have been built there, I don't uh, drive down there. So my clients, my couples, uh, simply doesn't make somebody to pick me up. <laughs> and so <laughs> so I had to go to the as it was, to the end of the road, right. and then they pick me up, yep. and then bring me back. Well, that's um, good that you go up there, because I oh, know yes. we can't, we won't even go up there, because I'm just afraid of getting stuck in the sand, you know. And that has happened. Yeah. And that has happened. And also, uh, very cautious when a, when a wedding is booked up there, to make sure it's not booked on a high tide. Exactly. Uh, because the, we know what a high tide can do. The mm -hmm. beaches can be very short, particularly if it's been blowing northeast with high winds. And... Um, I have um, I have had the, <laughs> the incident that a, a groom uh, had actually come to pick me up and we were headed back and the tide caught us. We got stuck and they had to bring the bride to us and I took them up on a sand dune and married them as the tow truck was coming to pull the, <laughs> to pull the vehicle out that we had been riding in. But it all worked out, yes. you know. So <laughs> Never I think everybody's got a, I think everybody's got a story oh, yeah. with Corova. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, you know there's been an awful lot of homes built up there, so when I say I can't find them, it, the streets aren't like regular streets, so right? You, you know, so that's the thing is I just can't find where they are mm -hmm. easily. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very difficult because right. Yeah, there's just sand dunes that you can't even see the houses. And, yes. Yeah. So that's great though that you can go up there. So how do people get married here? Where do they have the weddings? Well, most uh, couples um, rent an oceanfront cottage. However, there are only so many oceanfront cottages available. So many people may be two streets back or maybe even uh, four streets back. But most subdivisions, particularly in Kerala, have an access area that mm -hmm. is designated for that subdivision. So we simply go to that access area. Now, if you're in Kitty Hawk, Hill Double Hills, or Nags Head, and you're not on the ocean front, there are also many access areas that we can use. So uh, that's really not um, a, a problem at all. There's always a place for um, the couples to get married. Right. Now, there, there's no rules on those beaches, Nags Head, Kilo Hills, Kitty Hawk, Corrala area. Are there any rules, or you could just, everybody just walk down and, and have the wedding? Well, and, and Kitty Hawk, Nags Head, and Hill Devil Hills, they are public accesses. Now, Kerala does not have as many public accesses. Mm -hmm. uh, most of their public accesses are within the subdivisions. Right. So, um, th there are some, but, but not readily uh, available as there are in, in the Kill Devil Hills, Kitty Hawk, Nags Head area. Yeah, and there are just a couple of places where there are no public beach accesses, like, like I believe Southern Shores and Duck, I don't believe they have any, do they? You're correct. Yeah. Yes. yes. So you want to kind of definitely keep that in mind when you're planning. Right. And also, don't rule out lighthouses. A lot uh -huh. of couples get married at lighthouses, and, and a lot of people have a love affairs with lighthouses as well. And then we have other venues uh, that are on the sound side. That, um, and sound side is, is a great place to get married. Most, most people choose the ocean front. Um, but you know this, and, and most weddings in the summer are held about 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And the sun does not set over the ocean. It rises over right. the ocean. Right, people don't realize that. But the sun sets over the sound. So mm -hmm. if you really want a glorious sunset, you need to find a, uh, find a sound side venue, but they're not as easy uh, to find. Now, I will say this, that because we are on such a narrow island, that you do get the hues of the sunset on you the do. ocean uh -huh. side, it's usually. True. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, keep that in mind. Definitely. So if somebody wants to book your services, how do they go about doing that? Well, I think the best thing to do is to go to the website, and you can read all about me there. And that website is seeyouonthebeachobx.com. C-S-E-E, -E, you on the beach, obx.com. 
and uh, there's a, uh, a form you can fill out there. My phone number is also listed there. You certainly can call me as well. Free. Well, thanks so much for coming by today, and I hope you have a very successful wedding season this year. And well, thank you so much, Sue. If anybody's looking to get married here on the Outer Banks, you can contact Reverend Tanish. He'll do a great job for your ceremony. I'm Sue Arts with obxentertainment.com, and we'll see you next time.